Hey there folks, my name's Aaron and I'm an interpretive student aide with East Bay Regional Park District. Today, I'm at Sonol Region Wilderness. Sonol is a park that's known locally for its wide diversity of plant and animal life and other natural features. But many of these natural features have been sustained and managed by indigenous peoples through millennia of cultural use and management. One of these natural features is a plant called tule that grows in marshes and wetlands just like Alameda Creek running right behind me. Tule has been sustained by indigenous peoples throughout its range in California, North America, and even parts of South America. And that includes local Ohlone, whose land I'm on today, Bay Miwok, and Delta Yokut's peoples. Now many of the uses of tule were used by ancestors in a practical or utilitarian way. And this includes building houses or boats and often clothing as well. But these were far from the only uses of tule. Other uses of tule were simply for fun. These include games and toys. Today, I want to share one of these uses of tule with you all. Today I have with me a tule bittern. A tule bittern is a type of toy that made from tule. It was made by the ancestors of the Eastern Pomo, who call them digubahu. Digubahu is the Eastern Pomo word for the American bittern which is a bird found all throughout North American marshes and is actually what this toy is made to resemble. Now the American bittern, or the digubuhu, is actually quite reliant on tule and other reeds itself. It's actually quite well known for its ability to blend in with the tall cattails or the tall tules. And will actually extend its neck up into the air and will sway with the swaying cattails. Tugubuhu were typically made by Eastern Pomo mothers who then gifted them to their children as toys. Harvest for tule took, typically took place in the early fall, and there was great care and expertise involved in this harvest. Indigenous peoples, including the Eastern Pomo, have lived sustainably on this land for thousands of years, and as such, have developed management techniques through learned, shared, cumulative experiences. And today, as an employee of the East Bay Regional Park District, I've been able to collect tule for the purposes of demonstrating the making of a tule bittern. And I'd like to share that with you all right now. Now to start with our digubahu, I've cut about 10 pieces of tule in 13 inch pieces. And I've also soaked these pieces in water for about a half an hour. And if you'd like to do this from home, an alternative to tule could be corn husk, paper, or even some plants from your garden at home. Now the first step in making our digubahu is to take two pieces of tule Sort of make a lowercase t with them, with the horizontal piece underneath the vertical one. The next thing I'm going to do is take a third piece of tule, place it horizontally just below the first horizontal piece, but also on top of all of the pieces. Now that I've done that, I'm going to take the lower horizontal piece, and I'm going to fold the ends over the top of the other horizontal piece. And when I do that, you might notice that the upper half of the vertical piece of tule is going to bend down a little bit, but that's completely fine, and this is going to be the bill of our digubahu. Now I'm going to repeat the previous step, and I'm going to take another piece of tule, I'm going to place it horizontally below the other horizontal piece, and just like before, I'm going to take the other piece and fold the ends downward. Now I'm going to repeat this process two more times before we get to our last step in making our digubahu. Now my last step is going to be to tie the tugubahu, but before I do that, I'm going to take these arms that are sticking out and fold them down just like I did in the previous steps. Now to tie our tugubahu, I'm going to take a longer and a skinnier piece of tule. And I'm going to start wrapping sort of around the middle of the tugubahu, just enough to get all the folded pieces. Now as I'm wrapping this last piece of tule, I'm trying to be careful to wrap one end over the opposite end of the tie. That way, the tie stays in place. Now as I'm finishing wrapping this tule, I'm going to start to pull tightly, because once the tule starts to dry, it's going to become a little bit more loose. And now finally, I'm going to tuck in that last end of the last piece of tule, and I'm going to have my digubahu. Thank you all so much for joining me in the making of a digubahu. I hope you all were able to see a new use of our native plants, and I hope many of you are also able to gain a new perspective on your regional park's natural resources. Thank you, and enjoy the outdoors.